Hi all, Joshua Holko here, Wild Nature Photo Travel. And today I'm going to do a short video on soft proofing, uh, image sizing and image sharpening for print. And this is my own workflow. It's how I go about uh, making a print once I've got a file that, I, um, that I'm ready to, uh, to commit to paper. And uh, I do it in Photoshop, so I do all my printing out of Photoshop. Uh, it's just the way I've always done it. Uh, I know you can do it in Lightroom or various other programs, but for me, Photoshop works really, really well. Uh, and the process is very simple. What I want to do is I want to show you how I soft proof the image um, so that I know what it's going to look like um, before I commit ink to paper. And that's a very important step because uh, ink and paper are expensive. Um, ink especially is more than some of the most expensive whiskies, so you don't want to waste it. So if you can accurately predict uh, and you can accurately predict how the image is going to look before ink hits paper, you can save yourself a lot of time, hassle and money. And I'm going to show you how I do that. And we're going to use the same image that I did a short video on um, just before on a uh, processing video of this wolf, young wolf that I photographed in Finland in autumn in September uh, last year in 2019. And we're going to make a print. So here we are now, we're in Photoshop. Um, this is the finished TIFF file. Um, ready to, uh, as it's finished, so it's basically processed now, uh, ready to either make an export for the web or in this case make a print. So in order to soft proof the image, uh, we're going to go into view, um, view, proof setup, custom, okay, in Photoshop. And then that's going to pop a dialog here uh, where we can select the device we want to simulate. So in this case, we're going to um, we're going to use the profile for Somerset Museum Rag, which is a, a paper by Moab, uh, Legion paper by and Moab. It's actually my favorite printing paper. It's a beautiful soft paper, uh, matte paper, very uh, supple and uh, soft surface texture. It just works wonderfully for this type of photograph. So this is where I'm going to select the profile uh, that I want to use. So I've got Canon Pro 1000 printer, Moab Somerset Museum Rag. Just a heavyweight fine art paper. Uh, the proof profile I made with the x rite Isis uh, XL uh, for D50 lighting conditions. And this is a profile I made last year, so this is still my current profile. And the next thing to note in the drop down is that we have um, rendering intent. And there are four selections in here. Uh, the ones you really want to be concerned concern yourself with are either relative colorimetric or perceptual. These are the two that relate to photography, uh, or at least the most relevant. Uh, saturation and absolute colorimetric are really not suitable for, for, for the sort of work that, that uh, I'm doing. So as I flip between these, you'll notice the image changes. Uh, so it gets brighter or it uh, dims down a little bit. And that's a result of how the profile is dealing with the colors in the image. So. Uh, I know from this image that all the colors are going to be in gamut. That is, that the printer will be able to print all of the color that's in this uh, file. Um, and if you've got an image like that, uh, where all the color fits, uh, you know, inside the, the gamut of the printer, usually the correct re uh, rendering intent will be relative color metric because you, you have no reason to deal with out of gamut color. If you have an image that has a lot of very heavily saturated or deeply saturated color, uh, you may need to look at using perceptual, uh, which really, the difference between them from a gamut perspective uh, is that if you have any colors that are out of gamut, relative color metric will basically just cut them off. Uh, it won't, won't be able to print them, so it just cuts them off and ignores them. If you use the perceptual rendering intent, those out of gamut colors will be remapped into gamut, uh, and everything else inside the, um, inside the, 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 the printer's color space will also be moved. So that you can end up with uh, tonal shifts by using the perceptual rendering intent. So it's very easy to quickly flip between them um, to see the differences. In this case, I'm going to use relative color metric. Um, we want to simulate paper color and simulate black ink. And then we can preview it. So here's the image now as it's finished, the TIFF file ready to print. But here's the image as it's going to print. Well, as you can see, there's some differences there. Uh, they're not great, but there's definitely some, uh, some contrast missing. 
uh, from the image and a little bit of saturation as well. So this has been uh, referred to, this preview button, as the make my image look like crap button uh, in the past. Um, I've seen it referred to this way because in effect, it's simulating what the image is going to look like when ink hits paper. And that's important difference because the images we're looking at it here on the screen, as I'm toggling between them, is backlit uh, with a much higher contrast ratio than what we're going to see from ink on paper. So in this case, we are going to have to correct for that. So what are we going to do? Well, the first thing I like to do is make sure this is turned on. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a duplicate. So we're going to go to image duplicate. Now you can't do this with a new view. You uh, because anything you do to the new, to the new image will also be done to the other one. You need to do this with a duplicate. Uh, but this is just a throwaway file. So we'll create a duplicate, and then we're going to lay them up side by side. So window arrange tile two up vertical. And now we have our two files. So we have the file on the left, which is the original TIFF file. Ready to ready to uh, to work with, and then we have the soft proofing file on the right here, and this basically shows uh, how the image will look, as I say, when ink hits paper. So, in order to make the image on the right look like the image on the left, we're going to have to make a few small adjustments. Um, so, the way I like to do this is I have these saved up as actions, uh, just to save myself some time, and I have one here that uh, is basically a levels action, just to create a levels layer. Uh, you need to make sure you have the, the uh, soft proofed image selected here. So create a new levels layer. I'm going to set this to luminosity for the blending mode because I don't want to create any color shifts. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set my black point for a little bit of black clipping just to put some contrast back into the image and also my white point. So very subtle changes, but as I toggle that on and off, you can see how much contrast that's adding back in and how much closer it is now to the image on the right-hand side, on the left-hand side rather. So it's really just about tweaking this. Okay, and then I'm going to add a saturation layer as well. Do saturation. And I'm just going to add about seven or eight points of saturation so that now as I toggle my layers off so there's the image if I do nothing the image on the right is how it will print but I want it to print like on the left but with those two small adjustments you can see now I've got a very very close match almost identical in fact really hard pressed to see any difference between the two uh, images so that's those two tweaks uh, to this photograph will make a much much better print and then I can get rid of the duplicate. Uh, I don't need that anymore. That was just there as a reference for me. So I can close that. We don't need to save it. Uh, and now we have our file ready to, uh, to make a print. So we need to size it uh, correctly. Now in this case, I'm going to make a 16 inch print on 13 by 19 inch Somerset Museum rag paper. So I'll go to image, image size, and I'll set my um, width to 16 inches at 300 pixels per inch and then I will sharpen the image for print. Now I already capture sharpen this image and I showed how I did that in my uh, earlier video but now what we're going to do is we're actually going to sharpen it specifically for print. Now there's many ways you can do this. I like to use a plugin by Pixel Genius called PhotoKit Sharpener. It used to be a paid, uh, sorry if you can hear the lorikeets in the background there, they're going nuts outside my office window at the moment. Um, it used to be a paid application, um, the PhotoKit Sharpener, but now, now it's free from Pixel Genius. So you can jump over to their website and download it for free. And it's fantastic uh, for print sharpening. The process is actually fully automated. And actually, if you're doing your sharpening in Lightroom, you're using this uh, plugin from Pixel Genius without knowing it because that's the mechanics under the hood of Lightroom is uh, using PhotoKit Sharpener. So you access it in Photoshop through File Automate. Photo Kit Output Sharpener. And it will find automatically the, um, the size of the image and also the paper type, matte or glossy. Now it's important to have that set correctly because 
they need different amounts of sharpening, whether it's a matte or a glossy paper. Uh, and obviously, you want to set inkjet printers um, for the um, uh, for the um, for the sharpening, because we're not using contone or half tone or anything like that. So inkjet, and then for matte paper. And as you can see, it's already picked up the size and everything down here. And then we just literally hit OK, and that will apply the sharpening as a new layer. Now, it's it's a sh it should be noted, it's impossible to note, uh, to judge print sharpening on screen. Uh, it's not like judging the image at 100% once you've capture sharpened it. You really need to make a print. But if you've done your capture sharpening correctly, and you have um, optimally sharpened the image, then the output sharpening that is applied in this plugin will also be optimal. That is really the key uh, to the puzzle with print sharpening. You've got to get your capture sharpening right, and then your output sharpening, if you use this plugin, will, will also be perfect. And that's it. We're ready to now make a print. Uh, and uh, it's important to note now that we've sized this specifically to make a print at 16 inches on the long edge. So we'll be printing it on 13 by 19 inch paper on uh, Moab Somerset Museum rag which is just, as I say, beautifully soft, superb paper for, uh, for this type of uh, image. Uh, it really is my favorite paper. So to make a print now, we'll just go to File Print. And we need to go through some dialogue here, so we'll just go through this fairly quickly. We want the color handling, Photoshop manages colors, and we want to select the same printer profile that we made the soft proof with. This is really important, and a place where it's very easy to go wrong if you need to make sure that you're using the same profile that you soft proof the image with otherwise you're going to get a different result uh, obviously we want to use 16-bit we're using the relative colorimetric um, rendering intent with black point compensation and then in the print settings this is for the canon pro 1000 that i'm printing on i've got a preset set up for uh, somerset museum rag in uh, a3 plus and I'm just going to check I've got my quality and media set correctly. Heavyweight fine art paper, manual feed, highest quality. Save that and hit print. And away we go, we, we get our print. Um, and we'll get a print that really closely matches what we see here on the screen. And this is my, this has been my workflow now for making uh, prints for many, many years. Uh, doing the soft proofing this way in Photoshop, I find gives me very, very accurate uh, screen to print matches. Now it will never match completely because the print is front lit with a much lower contrast ratio than the backlit screen but it can be extremely close using this method and I find this works very very well for me. It's also quite quick uh, to, to accomplish as well. Uh, I guess it should be noted that one of the real keys to the puzzle when it comes to printing is the quality of the profile that you use. So you really need to make sure that you are using a custom-made, high-quality profile made by somebody who knows what they are doing. Because if you are using CAN profiles, it's been my experience that they're suboptimal most of the time. Uh, they're made on somebody else's printer under their conditions, and you really don't know what, what those conditions were when the profile was made. So you're far better off having a profile made for you. Uh, find one or two papers that you like and stick with them. In my case, I really love Somerset Museum Rag. That's my go-to paper uh, when I want to make a print. And I'd say probably 98% of the prints I do are made on that paper. Um, if I need a gloss paper, I'll go to uh, the Moab Juniper, which is a barite paper, which is a, a, a glossy fine art paper. But most of the time I'm on Somerset Museum Rag. Um, and so I've spent a lot of time making sure my profile for that is, is really optimal. And that's it. That's how I soft proof my images, size them and print them. Uh, if you've got any questions or queries on that, you can uh, leave me a note in the comments below and uh, subscribe for further updates.